Manitoba's kidney transplant program is justifiably proud of a number of innovations designed to improve the odds of a successful kidney transplant. You've been a pioneer when it comes to early detection of uh, kidney rejection. There are innovations that have occurred and uh, I don't think there's ever been a dull moment or a moment where there was something not uh, terribly exciting and novel uh, going on in the 30 years that I have uh, uh, practiced transplantation. Early in his career in the program, Dr. Rush encountered a patient whose transplanted kidney suddenly stopped working. We did a biopsy of that patient and we found that the kidney was uh, virtually completely destroyed. And if you looked at the patient's uh, trajectory from the laboratory point of view, there was no clue as to what, uh, what was happening in the kidney. From then on, protocol biopsies were taken at regular intervals for all transplant recipients. In those days, this was the 80s, so uh, 90s actually, 10 years after I came, uh, we found that up to 30% of patients were actually rejecting their kidney in a silent way. With newer medication, the need for these biopsies has decreased, but it has, uh, having done those biopsies and found uh, the, what we described as subclinical rejection or silent rejection, has uh, led people to realize that the response against the kidney, the rejection of the kidney, occurs in very subtle ways, very early, and it's, that, uh, it's at that time that we have the greatest chance to improve on the survival of the kidney if we make that diagnosis at its very early stages. So you find that early on that the kidney is, uh, is, is not doing well or is being rejected and then you can jump on it right away and start treating Right, before there's structural damage because first there's inflammation that doesn't cause any damage to the kidney but if that inflammation persists in the kidney without treatment it will eventually, eventually damage the structure of the kidney and it's too late then to, to cause any change by treatment. Dr. Rush is proud of the Transplant Manitoba program, the innovations, and the contributions to research. The uh, first uh, kidney transplant in Manitoba was done in the late 60s, uh, in 1969, by the sort of father of nephrology in Manitoba, Dr. Ashley Thompson. There has been a steady uh, growth, obviously, of the program uh, since then. When I arrived in Manitoba in 82, I think we had about 150 patients. We now have 600. So there has been a steady growth in, in the program. I'm, I'm happy to be able to say that uh, uh, Winnipeg has been uh, very, uh, not only up to date, but has uh, been a pioneer in a number of uh, uh, issues related to transplantation that uh, I think quite uh, honestly I'm proud of the team of uh, physicians and surgeons and personnel generally in the program because it, it has a very good reputation. He is confident that when he leaves, he's leaving the transplant program in very capable hands. That's what a uh, head always wants to do, is leave people behind that are better and better and better and to improve uh, things in the future.